evening. Welcome to the Winthrop Town Council meeting for November 28th, 2023. We are in the Harvey hearing room at seven o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Council Honan. Here. Council Pisello. Here. Council Munson. Here. Council Pelcher. Here. Council DeMarco. Here. Council Flockhart. Here. Council Aiello. Vice President Ruggiero. Here. President Letieri. Here. And just for clarification, Council Aiello is here. He's on He's Zoom, on correct? Zoom, yes. yes. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Please stand for the pledge. Councilor Galcha to leave. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes have been circulated from the November 14th meeting. Everyone had a chance to look them over. Is there a motion to approve? Motion. Motion by Councilor Belcher, second, second by Councilor DeMarco. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. General information and recommendations. We have nothing this evening. Uh, public hearing. We have two public hearings. The first public hearing we're going to open is the tax classification for fiscal 24. That public hearing is open. Um, we are still awaiting some information. We have asked, I have asked, and the town manager has asked to get more definitive information on certain questions. Um, so we're waiting for numbers, but we needed to open the public hearing tonight. We will continue this public hearing and we're meeting next Tuesday night, so we will conclude the public hearing next Tuesday night. Uh, so I will now entertain a motion to close this public hearing. Motion, motion by Councilor Belcher, second. second by Councilor Fusillo. All those in favor say aye. 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 This motion, this um, public hearing is continued. Motion to continue. We will now open a public hearing for good energy. Good energy, we were fortunate enough uh, several months back to have them here here, which we gave positive recommendation for. They were supposed to come back with updated information, and they are here. We are very happy to have Rafida uh, Ramin, Ramin here, and I believe Patrick Roach is on Zoom. If there he is right there. How are you doing, Patrick? You're looking great. Um, so I will hand the floor to Rafida. Thank you. Um, I'll start as soon as my presentation Sure. Starts. Can you hear me now? No, that no. microphone is just for WCAT. You just have That's to try good. to speak up a little bit. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting us to today's uh, town council meeting. My name is Rafida Rahman, and as you know, I work as a sustainability and engagement strategist at Good Energy. And I'm accompanied by uh, Patrick Roche. He's our director of innovation. And today we're here together to open um, Winthrop's public hearing and discuss the updates and next steps for Winthrop's aggregation plan and discuss the feedback received during the public review period. Next slide, please. Oh, thank you. So um, this slide basically shows how the program works. So Winthrop community, no, can you please go back to the previous slide? Yeah, this one. Yeah, so Winthrop Community Electricity does not replace National Grid as the electric utility. Um, the utility will continue to maintain wires and poles and respond to storms and still do the billing. The main benefits of this program is that it offers lower pricing, price stability, and cleaner electricity. Um, however, uh, future savings cannot be guaranteed because basic service rates change every six months for residential and commercial customers and every three months for industrial customers. However, one of the other benefits of the program is that it does not disrupt any of the existing benefits that you may have, like if you have bill discount for low income rates or, um, or uh, benefits for so, uh, solar, net metering customers, budget billing, it does not disrupt any of that. So. That's one of the benefits of this program. Next slide, please. 
So um, this slide basically focuses on what has already been done. Like, as you know, that the town council voted to authorize aggregation and partnered with Good Energy to make us their aggregation consultant so that we can dra uh, develop a draft aggregation plan. And this aggregation plan was made available um, after September 19th when we kick-started the public review period. And I think some of the hard copies were also available uh, in the town manager's office. Next slide, please. So um, during the public review period, uh, the public hearing was also publicized by the town via a number of steps. First, an announcement was made about the public hearing on the town website and on the social media pages. Plus, there was a notice that was ran on Winthrop's cable TV station, and there were flyers created in English, Spanish, and Portuguese because these are the languages that are majorly spoken in Winthrop. Next slide, yeah. So um, this slide basically fo uh, shows the three products that are offered by the town. The first is Winthrop Standard, which is the community default product and is the most widely used. And this offers five to 10% um, additional renewable energy. And among the optional products, there are two products, Winthrop Basic, which does not offer any additional renewable energy. It only meets the state's minimum for renewable energy, whereas Winthrop Plus um, basically offers a total of 100% renewable energy. Next slide, please. Moving forward, um, so as you know that the public review period has been open for over a month now, and however, additional questions are still welcome even after today's public hearing. Uh, we did uh, receive a number of questions during this period, and I will be discussing that shortly. Um, next, uh, we plan to, the town plans to um, have a consultation with the Department of Energy Resources later this year. Um, we're also currently reviewing some new guidelines that DPU has been developing. And these changes are nothing too major. They're mostly about um, formatting changes, sometimes some kind of a, a little different alignment, um, changes in some of the vocab used in the plan and stuff like that. So we plan to uh, work on a final plan and uh, we plan to send that to the council for a potential vote later this year. And if, if approved, we plan to submit the plan to the DPU. In fact, I think we plan to come, um, I think in the second town council meeting later this December, so hopefully we're, gonna, we're not gonna be too late. Okay, so these slides are b basically discuss uh, some of the questions that we have received. So the first question is that this, per this person wanted more information about the program and about if they have the option to join in or not. Um, so, uh, I so we tried to give them an overview, but if I had to summarize, uh, we basically said that the program is creating, uh, that the town is creating a program where residents and businesses can choose their electricity supply from different options. They can automatically join, but can automatically opt out as well uh, and choose a different plan. And um, the program offers a standard option and other choices uh, with different renewable energy levels and prices like I've discussed in the, in the previous slides. And eligible customers will receive a notice with details about the plans before the program starts. People can join or leave the program anytime they want and uh, without a penalty. So that's always a good thing. And the program is still, however, being developed and is expected to start uh, in the fall of next year. And, and uh, we've also um, added the program website and uh, we've also notified them about the public hearing today. Next slide, please. Yeah. 
So uh, in the second question, uh, the pers someone asked about will national grid still be there if they enroll into the program? And as I've discussed in my second slide, the national grid will not replace winter community electricity um, as their electric utility. They will only, they will still be responsible for the delivery portion of their bill. However, um, the, the program will, you know, um, offer them competitive supply options. So that's something that we have elaborated in this answer. And the third question is, is this the same program as community aggregation? So yes, I have said yes, it is. And in Massachusetts, there are different kinds of names for this program. Sometimes it's known as municipal aggregation, sometimes it's known as community choice aggregation, and it's active in over 150 cities and towns. And um, so yeah, that's something that we have actively discussed. And number four is, um, again, they asked about how much time would be given between the mailing of the opt-out cards and the automatic opt-in. So we have elaborated that, um, that everyone will get about a month to decide if they want to join the program before it starts. And if they don't actively opt out during that time, they will be automatically enrolled. And even if they do join and later change their mind, they can leave any time they want without any penalty. Um, but, and again, we have reminded them that the program won't start until next fall and that it's still in development. Um, another question, so another question and a very common question that we get is, will this save us money on our electricity bill? And we have elaborated that the town, with the help of uh, Good Energy as their aggregation consultant, is trying to um, get good deals um, on the supply portion for their electricity. And uh, however, a future savings cannot be guaranteed, as I've repeated earlier, because the prices change um, from every three to six months. Um, but the good thing is that you know you can leave anytime you want without paying any penalty. And Good Energy actually has a good track record regarding um, regarding this. So um, his and based on our previous track records, we have actually um, been successful in providing savings for people. So the next question we got is, will the town of Winthrop receive a commission on electricity <coughs> that is purchased through the new supplier? So we have clarified that no, um, the town will not be receiving a commission on this electricity um, that is purchased through the new supplier. However, there will be a commission fee for the aggregation consultant. And the last question we received is, what is the cost per kilowatt hour? Before we decide if we want to participate, will we know what the electric supply will be, will cost per kilowatt hour? So again, um, we have elaborated that right now, the town is in the process of creating the plan for the program. Once both the town and, this depart and the DPU give their approval, the town can proceed with the bidding uh, to set the final price and start date and at least a month before the program begins, eligible customers will receive a letter with information about the pricing as part of the overall public outreach efforts. So, yeah. So these were basically all the questions we received. Um, if anybody has some any additional questions, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you, Rashida. Does Patrick have anything to add? Do you have anything Patrick? to add, Patrick? Uh, no. Thank you. Uh, again, thank you so much for this. And just to <clears throat> recap, we, we have this on old business, but we're going to keep it as a placeholder. We are not going to be voting on this tonight for your request yes. also. We have already shown our support for this and continue that support. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a public hearing. I will still open it up for questions. I will ask the council first if there's any questions from the council. Uh, Councilor Munson. Thank you, Council President. Hi, Rafida. How are Hi. you? 
I'm fine. How Thank are you? you for your presentation. And uh, I just was curious. You said that um, we can't, you can't guarantee savings, but your history of, of, of good savings, can you give us a rough number of uh, discount based on percentage of compared to the, uh, what you would have done? And also, can you also just say how much more renewable energy that includes with those, uh, those rough estimates of savings? Um, I think the latter part of the question would be better if Patrick answers it, but okay. I can answer the first part of the question. So mostly we are, uh, we help, a, we, we don't really guarantee any windfall savings, right. but uh, it's been roughly around 10% that we have helped save. But in probably like the last year during the whole, um, you know, the war and when the prices were you know, um, going up up and down a lot. I, I think there was a time when people were saving around 50%. 1-5, 15. No, 5-0. 5-0, 50%. Yeah, because it was so, because Such it was spikes. fluctuating so right. much. But, wh but when it's not as, you know, um, ha when it doesn't fluctuate as much, we do save around 10%. Um, that's what we... That was that's what we that's what we've been seeing, and um, the reason we don't uh, guarantee any f um, savings is because, you know, the basic service rates for the utility, you know, it changes every three months or six months. So we wouldn't really know what the price is until that time. So that's just want to give people an understanding yeah. of so that's ballpark what to expect. Yeah not to make yeah. you hold and the it. reason why we save as much money is because you know we offer a price stability you know like it stays right. stable for a longer period of right. time so yeah i think that's what contributes and i think the latter part of your question maybe patrick could answer Council Belcher. Thank you. Um, how long are your rates provided for if decimal grid changes three to six months? Um, so it depends on the duration of the program. So um, some communities commit for <coughs> two to three years, so it stay, stays stable through that long. And again, if, the, if they choose to renew, then maybe we offer a new price and then, then that stays stable. But I think basically the duration of the program, which is two to three year, uh, years. Thank you. Yeah. Vice President Ruggiero. Thank you, um, and thank you for coming. Uh, we appreciate the information. Um, so just to talk logistics, um, what does the, uh, the homeowner, or put differently, what does the electric bill payer have to expect? So if you want to opt in, you do nothing, you're automatically opted in, and you're a part of the program if this, if this passes and the council approves it. If you don't want to be a part of this, you have to manually opt out. Is that, I think, how I understand it? Um, and then, you know, the more of us that stay opted in, the better rate you all can negotiate. Am I, am I understanding the logistics of this correctly? Patrick, you want to elaborate on this? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, so roughly, you have that right. I would just add a couple things. So one is that the, um, people who are eligible for automatic enrollment are is anyone who hasn't already chosen their own electricity supplier. So that would probably be most of the residential customers in town and, and a large portion of the business customers. Um, so that's sort of important because if you're someone out there who has chosen your electricity supplier, you get your own contract. Um, of course, you're, you're welcome to join anytime. 
some reason you you know you miss that card or you or, or you know two months goes by and you decide you don't want to do the program anymore, you can always opt out <clears throat> at any time uh, after that. So uh, yeah, three different ways to opt out. And then the final piece there was what's nice is actually the number of people who opt out don't change the program's price. Okay. So <clears throat> what we uh, the way the way we run these bids for you is that the supplier is guaranteeing their rate, their price, uh, really no matter what the load in your program is. So this is kind of different from some contracts that you might have for the, the school or you know, your school or your town electricity that might have caps, you know, you can't use less than this or more than this or the price changes. Thankfully that doesn't apply uh, here. So, um, you know, and as many people can opt out as, as they want and the supplier will still honor the price. Great. Thank you. Councilor Aiello, did you have any questions? Vice President Ruggiero. Thank you. Um, that last point you made, Patrick, just kind of sparked another question. Um, you know, there's this co-branding, I guess, agreement that we have with the town, but what I just want to make sure of, and maybe this is a question for the manager, is that if folks have questions about this or um, concerns regarding it, are we equipped here at Town Hall to answer those questions, or will all inquiries go to good energy and how are we going to kind of brand this messaging, whatever goes out to customers um, to make sure that, you know, they're going to the right place to get the answers to any questions they have. Because, uh, you know, unless they're all going to Denise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say both. I mean, there's contacts for good energy, but also any questions that come in our office, we're getting the answers from good energy and making okay. sure we get the information back out. So, Got it. So, um, so basically what we did today was that the questions like the ones that I presented. Mm -hmm. So we actually got them through the program website and we kind of, and what I did was that we 
the uh, the consultants have we get notified when we get questions and then we forward them the answers um like to the people who have um, asked us those questions. And what we did today was that today that we've compiled all the questions, we took out the names or anything, but we compiled all the questions and the responses, made a PDF, and we kind of um, attached that and linked that to the program website, like in the homepage. So anybody who wants to see their questions answered or wants to see what anybody <coughs> else has asked, they can go to the program website and see the okay. question answers. And we're also monitoring social media. I know I received some messages from Council Honan that we've also forwarded to Good Energy to try to get those yeah. answers as well. So mm -hmm. we're looking at both. Yeah, just because, you know, now the town is in the energy business, quote unquote. You right. know, so we, you know, I'm, yep. I know you got it under control, but I no, just want to make sure that we, you know. Always room for improvement. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions from the public? Uh, yes. Um, Travis. Karen Travis, Precinct 2. A couple of things. First of all, you said um, a postcard will go out to all eligible national grid customers. That postcard, does it have the three options that you mentioned on it, or is the option just automatic? No, I mean, it has the three options. It does have the three options. Yeah. So you can opt which of, of, whichever one you want. Mm -hmm. You also said something about um, the town going out to bid. Cost-wise, um, does this price vary like it does with National Grid? Um, you know, in the summertime, the supply is cheaper than it is in the winter time. Does this vary the same, or is this a, a standard a standard amount twelve months of the year? It is a standard amount for twelve months of the year. And will we know what that cost is before we have the option? I mean, this goes to the town, I don't know. Before you opt in or out, will you know what that cost will be? Patrick, can you, like, could you elaborate on yeah. this? Sure, yep, and just to what the Michael Peter said, yeah, we will, so you will, um, the price will be fixed for whatever term the town chooses, chooses. so the town could choose a 12 month term, uh, 18 month, you know, 24 month, we'll, we'll, we'll look at a bunch of different options for term length. Like, um, and whatever that term is, it'll be fixed over that term, so it won't vary. And, um, and, and so when you get that letter in the mail, like Rafita said, we'll have all three options, the price for all three of those, and it will tell you how long it's fixed for. So if the town entered a 24-month you know, uh, contract, it would, it would have the price for all of those three. It would say because this is fixed for you know, the next 24 months. So then it's up to the town to get the town the best price, not up to good energy. good energy. Good energy is going to tell you where to go, and then it's up to the town to actually get the best price for the town. Or am I not? Uh, I guess if I could just refine that a little bit, I think you're on the right track. The idea is that we are your consultant, so we are going to help the town conduct the bid, um, get the bid, negotiate contracts with suppliers, and, um, but ultimately, we're just advising the town, and, and uh, the town manager, you know, will decide if we're going to sign a contract, if you're going to sign a contract. Um, so, uh, if, if, if that's that's helpful, so yeah, we'll we'll be sort of essentially facilitating the bidding process and advising the town on, on what you know what our recommendation is for which which term and you know whether or not to, to sign. Just one more question then. The town manager is going to make the decision. Is that with the consent of the council, or is that on the town manager's own? I, I, I believe the set up is with the consent of the council. It is. Yeah. So the, the council. council will vote the, on the, the town manager will present to the council, and then the correct. Council the council will vote votes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. It, yeah. it needs uh, the town council approval, and after that, you know, we'll submit okay. to the. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Carol. Thank you, Carol Meach, Precinct One. Um, what is the cost of the Good Sense services above, you know, the, whatever the negotiated rate will be for the town for the supply? Um, and what problem are we trying to solve other than the green energy? Are we trying to kind of outsource some of the work off of the council and town manager? Are we just looking towards a new initiative for green energy? 
I apologize if I didn't attend before and understand that. Savings. Patrick? Did you want to take this? Yeah, I can start there. Yeah, so uh, the agreement we have signed with the town is our cost of our services is uh, a tenth of a penny per kilowatt hour. So uh, that's point zero zero one dollars per kilowatt hour. So, you know, the, if, the, if it cost 10 cents per kilowatt hour, it would be 10.1 cent, cents per kilowatt hour with our fee in it. Um, so and that, that, that's the same fee regardless of who the supplier is or how long you, you contract for. Um, and I think in terms of the, 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 um, the goals of the program, I think one aim is to help try to lower the cost of electricity. The other is to help stabilize the cost of electricity um, with those longer terms. And then there is also the ability to, um, to, have, to have more renewable energy. Um, and I think that maybe a third one here is that because the, the town has this buying power and the town gets to you know, um, negotiate a contract with the supplier, we can negotiate really favorable terms and conditions, which individual residential customers may have a hard time finding out in the open market on your own um, because most of those offers are kind of like take it or leave it, you know. Um, so the town gets to kind of and, and gets to uh, create a contract that has favorable terms and conditions such as, you know, you can leave whatever you want, for example, no penalty. Uh, but I think that's, that's kind of what's, what's what you're trying to do here. So the, if I could follow up, so the individual can leave, but the town is signed into two years. Yes. The individual can opt out of any. Yeah. Thank you. There's no financial liability to the town. <coughs> Thank you, Jim. Uh, Jack Dow, Precinct 1. Uh, is there a consumer uh, material or consumer reports uh, concerning your business? Is, has it been successful in any other town or municipality in the state? If you could provide us with that information so people might want to make a choice after reading that material. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'll start that. So we work with another um, about 50 by zero active programs in Massachusetts. Um, we, uh, so nearby, we are helping Malmald is in a similar position. They're filing their plan, but we've been operating with Melrose and Stoneham, Winthrop, Medford uh, for years now. So have a website similar to, to Winthrop, so you can <coughs> Google, you know, Melrose Community Electricity or, um, um, or, or the same thing for, for Bedford, and you'll find their sites. You can see their prices um, and see how, see how they're doing. But I think follow you, up you even mentioned, oh, sorry, what's No, that? continue, continue, Patrick. Mr. Dunn. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't want to Google any websites. I'd like a written report supplied to the town council of what you just mentioned so that we can have it in our hand to look at without going searching for it. Uh, I think searching on Google can be very confusing for a lot of people, especially the elderly that really need the help of understanding uh, what you're proposing here. So I'd like a written report supplied to the town council instead of us going looking for it. Thank you very much. And we will ask for that. We'll make sure Thank we have you. that available. Any other questions? Yes, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne Swope, Precinct 4. Uh, what is the current kilowatt hour rate that you're offering? Wait, I offer what I'm saying. Just a minute, Jack. Uh, so each of our programs we'll has through. a different price based on when those towns contracted, how long they contracted for. So uh, uh, that we have, a, I guess, many different prices out there. So some communities, but just as a summary, some communities who contracted, um, say a couple of years ago, when they signed a three-year contract, 
Many of them have rates that are prices that are in the 10 cent or 11 cent per kilowatt hour range. Um, just as a, as a reference point, National Grid right now this winter is 18 cents. Um, and then some of our communities who have contracted a little bit more recently, uh, market, the market in general has moved up. Uh, they're more at the like 15 cent rate, but again, they're still lower than, um, than National Grid. So, uh, so um, yeah, that, that, that's a bit of a, that's a where, where they are. Yes, Cam. Um, just one more thing. I've heard you mention several cities that are already involved with this, but they have a larger population than Winthrop. Does it make a difference, the amount of kilowatt hours that you use versus price? Does, I mean, I mean, I'm sure, sure that Boston uses probably 10 or 15 times more than Winthrop does. It might, it might, right. I'm trying to make, I'm, I'm not sure what, I know what I'm asking, but I'm not sure I'm making myself clear. Oh, no, for sure, yeah. Um, so we also do work a lot of towns. So you know, the town of Winchester, for example, or Cohasset, Marshfield, Situate, um, uh, Westwood, there are some examples. Um, and some really small towns like Marion, uh, Mount Poisa, for example. Uh, so I think that what the nice thing is that at, even at the town scale, certainly at, at, at Winthrop scale, you, you have that buying power is enough to, to, um, to be a material difference where you can, you, know, you can attract the attention of large suppliers and you can negotiate terms with them. So um, I think based on our, our track record, there's no reason we would see the, the width of size as being too small uh, for sure. For now you're, you're, um, you'll definitely have enough, enough load. <coughs> Thank you. Yes. Excuse me, Kathy Martin. I think I'm facing six, but don't quote me. Um, I'm not sure. Um, what exactly, in, in layman's terms, is the difference between the basic plan, the no option plan, and then the three little leaf plan? Am I helping the environment more by paying more per kilowatt hour to you or whoever would be supplying it? Or uh, I guess I just wonder what do those three F levels mean? To us briefly, you know, and so the basic one, which is um, the one of the optional products, so that only has renewable energy to based on the state requirements, which right now I think is fifty nine percent, and the two that's like the gray circle, and the standard is the Winthrop standard, and that's basically. Uh, used as the default, and the two leaves basic, and that kind, of, the two leaves basically implies that it adds five to ten percent additional renewable energy. By paying more. Yeah, you have to pay a little bit more. However, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's not the difference is really not as substantial. You know, right. so it's basic. So you're saving. Um, like you are paying a little bit extra, but the renewable energy that you're receiving is a lot more. So um, the difference is not really that that much. However, the third one, which is the winter plus with the three leaves, um, that has the most amount of renewable energy, but it has to be a total of hundred percent. So uh, it's um, yeah. So that's the yeah. basic difference. And that could be quite yeah. a bit more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a lot more. And I was just going to add in, just again, in layman's terms, as you asked, um, as everybody, as you may know, we all have, you know, there's one set of wires that goes to your house, so the electrons that you're going to be pulling off of the grid won't be different, right, based on which option you choose. But um, the way, what, what, you know, what your choice will guarantee is what type of energy gets put onto our, renew, our New England electricity grid. So if you are paying for the, the 
everybody here knows, a lot of the um, mail I get, uh, it almost makes it look as though it's mandatory that you sign up for a different program that's offered. And it's true, it says, you know, quick, sign this quickly, get it back in the mail. It, it almost looks threatening. I would imagine it looks threatening to seniors who, you know what I mean, don't realize, no, that's a choice they're offering and you don't have to do that. But just so you're aware, we do get solicited by other green companies, but it, it makes it look like it's imperative mm -hmm. that our electricity will go away if we don't sign. So mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. just wanted to throw that out to everybody. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Dr. Cowan, yes. So I, I have one comment um, or question. So the state is mandating so much renewable energy on the grid, uh, the New England grid, correct? Yeah. So does that mean that National Grid also has to meet these standards or beat these standards? Isn't that going to be, you know, something that's going to happen naturally going forward? And what would be the benefit of going with good sense as opposed to keeping National Grid as just without good sense? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Patrick? Is there another question? Yes. Um, Just leave in precinct. Oh, sorry, sorry. Rachel Kaiser, okay. okay. precinct two. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so I think you spoke earlier about like if you were with a private company, you wouldn't automatically get rolled right um, into the program. Correct. But you you could if you wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. Will we still get that postcard though from you to like so I can remember to you know, like, look at your rates versus what I have right now, for instance, and then make that decision. Uh, right now, we won't, the town won't get the, the data, the mailing data, to know, we don't get any mailing data, but um, we only get it for the eligible customers. Um, so, but as part of the launch, the town will do, will be working with the town and leading this on the town's behalf, <coughs> a lot of public outreach uh, before and after the mailer. So we'll be coming back to the town council, we'll do, we'll probably go to the senior center um, we'll do, you know, work with the town for social media updates, press releases, you know, talk to the, um, uh, you know, get people access going. So we'll, we're going uh, to do some outreach to mobile groups. So we'll be trying to get the front word broadly out uh, through a bunch of different ways. And, you know, that'll be happening probably at least probably 40, starting 45 days before the program. So we'll be doing our best efforts to make it, yeah, make everybody aware that, that this is coming and, and give you that, that chance to opt in. You know, if you miss it at the very beginning, that's not a problem. You can, you can get in, you know, whatever. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, Diane Harry, Kispo, Precinct 3. I'm wondering if um, Winthrop, depending on the timetable, will work with other communities and increase our purchasing power. Tony? I'll yeah, let Patrick jump in because that was one of the advantages of the timing of this. But go ahead, Patrick. Yes. Chief O'Brien, Precinct 6. I have a quick question for you. And 
this, I mean, it sounds great, but you know, like it, when, when everything start, starts out and then it goes and people jump on and the prices, of course, like you said, you can't guarantee everything. Is this going to be something that's not so much directed to him, him indirectly, it's directed to the people on the board that represent all of the community. Is this going to be something like, Com, for example, Comcast Xfinity, that the board's going to decide, okay, we're going with Xfinity because the town got a great deal back with Comcast, with Comcast, which is now Xfinity. And now, unless you go for the dish, the town is stuck with Xfinity Comcast, which is Xfinity. Is the board going to decide to go with this and put that same type of thing in that the town's going to be, you know, should they decide to go with this company and go green, that the town's not going to have a choice? if the board decides to take this above and beyond for the community as a whole versus an individual, you know, everybody is an individual the way he's talking about it now. Because unless you can't change a cable, you're stuck with old Comcast and now Xfinity unless you get a dish. Is the board going to go with this plan and then we're stuck in the same way we are with the TV, you know, the television? You can always opt out. Yeah, you could, the town can always opt out, and there are other providers. <laughs> with Comcast, for example, there are no other providers right, that this is what want I'm to be in here. Is that same thing going to happen with this if you guys decide to go with just this whole program that's for us, you know, tax and, and, no, and, like and you're not locked in because individuals can always opt out. You can right. opt out anytime. You if you're not happy with the rate. You guys are going to override, you know what I mean? No, no, we can't. That's they not did part of the way program. Back in the day with the, you no. know, that's all. No, no, absolutely not. But Patrick, did you have something to add? Any other question? Again, we can't thank Patrick and Rafita enough, and we hope to see you within a month, right? Um, the, the council uh, is still very supportive of this. We appreciate all the work you're doing for us um, and for the environment, but for us and for the citizens, and hopefully to save some money as well. So thank you both for coming, and we hope to see you within a month. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. And with that, I am going to close this public hearing. Now go to public comment. Public comment is now open. Yes. Um, hi again. Um, I have a question. Just about name again, Carol. For the oh, I'm sorry, record. Carol Mead. This is one. Um, so I have a question about policy <coughs> on. Um, Town department hosting events and stuff on open discussion groups. So there was something recently about um, trash and extra pickups that went on a couple of different of the open discussion groups. And then I went and I looked on the town site and I didn't find the same thing. So then I said, let me look and see if there's anything for the, you know, in the IT committee about policy and process and how this works operationally. My question is based on if, if programs and pickups and, you know, DPW trees, whatever it is, it starts to go out onto public discussion groups in Winthrop and not the official channels, then people are going to get confused and look at these other places rather than going to the town website. Now, the town website, I've seen a lot of improvements, so thank you for that, too. Um, so I'm curious if there's a policy about that. And I'm, I'm bringing this up because recently there's been a lot of things everywhere that people have talked about. So um, I'd like to be able to help with that if I could at some point. And then I went to look at the IT committee to see if there was anybody there that I could talk to and that link is broken on the site and I don't even know if there is one. So um, if there's something I can do to help with that. Um, uh, thank you for your um, cool. suggestions <laughs> there. And, as far as policy, I will say that I, I believe the council's internal policy is that everything should be on the town website. There are people that will copy and paste and do stuff That's like okay. that, take a picture, and there's nothing much we could do about right. that. But anything concerning uh, late 
pickup day, a holiday pickup, a leaf pickup, should all, and, and I believe it is, I thought most of it is on the town website. Yeah, through the DPW, yeah. Nothing should go out on social media without it being on the town website. Okay, right? so I've I mean, seen this from, from town employees. But we do, and I do thank you for your comments on the updates on the on the website. We still have a lot of work to do on on Working IT, on and uh, mm -hmm. it's not unnoticed at all by this board or <coughs> by the town manager. Um, and it will be continued to work on, and we might just take you up in your offer. Yeah, please do. Thank you. Yep. Is it okay if we bow out and say good night? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're not forced to stay once you come yeah. in. <laughs> okay. Have a good night. We have to stay, but you don't. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, uh, I gave everybody a piece of paper. There's a handout um, that I gave at a public forum um, in 2017. And from the Boston Evening Transcript, it describes the conditions of New Side Park. That was uh, donated to the town, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I've mentioned it many times. Mm -hmm. I just want, uh, before this uh, request for information uh, that uh, supposed to go out uh, for today, by the 30th, I don't think, that um, this is a park. It's 13 acres minus Walden Street, which is about two acres. So it's about 11 acres. And, it, and the 11 acres is described in two. Uh, studies done by with the people uh, in, in, included in this book. But mm -hmm. you know, this book would take me about uh, 20 minutes uh, yes. to read, Jim. Do you want me to read it? No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, second thing I want to mention, so I, I hope uh, everybody takes into consideration that you're dealing with uh, open space and parking. And, and, and it's governed uh, by, uh, according to uh, a letter in the Transcript. It's governed by Article 97, Disposition of Land. I just want to read uh, one fun paragraph of uh, that letter that was written. Uh, one of the most hidden costs, however, is time. Article 97 of the Massachusetts General Law seeks to protect park and recreation lands, an incredibly important effort. So that's just one uh, paragraph out of uh, a letter that, uh, that was attributed to uh, Jim Letieri. Uh, concerning uh, Ingleside Park. Um, so we have to take that into condition so that everybody that's interested in doing something with land available in the town of Winthrop knows that uh, Ingleside Park is a park governed by Article 97. It seems to be a lot of confusion, Jim, uh, from a lot of people that uh, go on Facebook you know, what's this, and where can it go, and where can the fire station go, where can this go, where can the recreation of building go? The property at 151 Pauline Street, it's on the corner of Waldemar and Pauline Street, is 1.19 acres, according to research done by people that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the groups in town are going by the GIS map, which is, sh should not be considered any type of legal uh, entity governs what can and can't be sold. You can sell 1.19 acres that the town of Winthrop owns at the corner of Pauline Street and Waldemar Ave. Otherwise, every other inch of property in those confines is parkland. The reason why it's dedicated parkland is because it says so right in, in, in the report. And, and it says right in the deeds. All, all this stuff has been researched. And uh, hopefully, uh, with this letter that was in the transcript, that the, the, the uh, town council is agreeing at this point that it is parkland. And if you want to dispose of parkland, you have to go through the process. Correct. Now, the last thing, and I'm under three minutes. No. Well, I'll <laughs> you continue. Ready to go. I got one more sentence. For That's you. okay. Uh, I know that the board is going to change. And people's attitudes uh, hopefully will change about Ingleside Park. Uh, on Max Tazanieri's uh, Council of Large uh, send out before the election, the uh, 
both lying down, states, he's going to be advocating to protect and promote winter parks, green spaces, and environmental resilience. I hope everybody takes that attitude from here on in with the new board that we want to protect green space and we want to plant trees. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Marcy. <coughs> Marcy Hinton, PCT. Um, over the last couple of months, I've reached out to a lot of the councils and I thank you so much for, for responding and being there because I'm trying to wrap my head around how our government works. Mm. <laughs> it may sound like a you know, an odd question, but it, it's important to me to see how I can help, and thank you so much. Um, because we do want to help pr um, provide openness. We want to communicate better with our precincts, our neighborhoods, and we want to get a new fire station built. We want to get um, more conversations about diversity out there and senses of community. So if I haven't had the time or you, through the holiday, season we haven't connected yet i will be contacting you just to see and um, how we can help as community members to to solve the problems of our small town and i know there's a lot of people like myself out there who um have the same ideas i talked to mr uh, you know who i talked to so um thank you so much for allowing me to have that conversation and i look forward to more conversations in the future thank you much for all your support <laughs> Tobacco Precinct 2. Um, I'm coming in tonight to talk about the, the, the flag policy. I'm a little concerned about some recent uh, <coughs> issues. I guess I'll call them issues. Uh, my understanding is that the flag policy was implemented to allow for the council to decide by proclamation or the town manager to raise flags for the general purpose of being inclusive in our community. It's a timely conversation here. <laughs> we have had um, I have reached out because I, uh, well, we have ha actually, I understand that the Israeli flag was actually on the agenda to be raised or to be discussed. And then because the person raising it wasn't here, it wasn't discussed and never brought up again. And I'm curious why that is. And I'm, I'm, please let me finish. Don't ask, I want any questions answered. I, and I'm very curious and concerned about that. Um, again, diversity and inclusion. Um, so I reached out to my council precinct two counselor and ask for his help. And my understanding is he's going to be addressing this in the, in the coming uh, correspondence section of the meeting, which means there won't be a proclamation made. And that to me is disturbing given that we've had three, three proclamations voted on, all unanimously, all unanimously passed but one. Uh, the Italian uh, flag being raised for two weeks had one dissenting vote. The pride flag was unanimous and I believe it was the Arruzioni flag that was unanimous as well. Nobody's here making a proclamation for the Israeli flag, other than one person. And why has it not been brought up again? I understand that, my understanding is Mr. Munson reached out to someone at the temple and whatever that is is irrelevant, quite frankly, because the people in this room that are here with me, my wife and my children, are part of this community. But this entire council, not just Mr. Munson, this entire council is ignoring it. You are, and I, I told you when you implemented this foolish flag policy, and I'm getting emotional, so forgive me, that this was going to happen. So I encourage you, be more than words, and be action. You said, work with everyone for the betterment of winter, Mr. Diversity and Inclusivity. My an question is not answered. You have not answered the question of why you have not made the proclamation. So I, I'm, and, and all of you owe us that answer. I think everybody in this room, Jewish and non-Jewish, deserve an answer. And if you're worried about pushback from the other side, it's your flag policy. You made the bed, sleep in it. What else are we supposed to believe? I mean, I, I'm not in any of your hearts, but it's certainly at, at, at its lowest level discrimination and at its worst, anti-Semitism. Like I said, I don't know what any of you were thinking. I, I don't believe the few friends I have left on this council are anti-Semites. I don't believe that for a minute, but I don't know what this motivation is. And you give us nothing else to think. You leave us to our own devices to, to respond to this. So I would encourage you to A, raise this flag, or B, 
change your policy. Thank you. I'll just make two clarifications there, just for the record, that it, it's never been on the on any agenda. So that's question one, and there's been four proclamations, not three. Other than that, um, was the fourth comes. one unanimous as well? And what was the fourth one? The fourth <coughs> one was Juneteenth. Juneteenth. So okay, again, um, we're again, picking just and clarification. Who we support no community. Very clear. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, yes, Karen. Um, Karen Chavez, Precinct 2. I should have asked this question during the public hearing. I apologize. The council has already signed a contract, this is true, with Clean Energy to go forth with this. And if that is true, um, the, the town is going to go forth with this, no matter what. There will be a vote from the council to confirm. Oh, we to have confirm. voted to confirm to go forward with it. We will now, they will now come back to us and we will have a final vote to confirm. Yeah, and to be okay. clear, the vote will to be, be to confirm the application that's going to go into DPU. Right. And then it'll take. Do you know when that has to be done by? It's whenever we commit, they say it's 180 days. Sometimes it's taken up to two or three years, but they've gotten better recently. Okay. So it'll be 180 days. That's why they anticipate next fall, you know, best case scenario. Okay. So that's what they're looking for. The uh, good energy the contract. The presentation we just had. The green oh, energy. Oh, yes. we back to that? Yeah. <laughs> well, we just had a quick question. It's public comment. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, Mr. Town. I should have asked the question during the public hearing, and wow. I didn't. Karen, did you have anything else? No, thank you. Yes. I mean, we're in Precinct 6. What is the procedure to get a proclamation in front of the town council to have the Israeli flag raised? I'm speaking as a lifelong Winthrop resident, born in Winthrop Hospital, the Jewish community. I'm not speaking for any institution. I'm speaking for the Jewish community of Winthrop. What is the procedure to get a proclamation going? The procedure is a the town manager by proclamation or any town councilor can request it to be put on a, any agenda. Can we, <laughs> can we request it be put on the next you agenda? You can have a, a council needs Someone to make a, a, a recommendation or a proclamation. Mr. Ruggiero, you precinct six? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Could you please put that on the next agenda? Yes. To have a proclamation. I'll make the proclamation. Okay, okay? thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually just would like to clarify. A Again, Todd Sacco. Yes, sorry, Todd Sacco, Precinct 2. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> you don't have to stand up. Um, it seems to me that you, you all shook your head no, that you're not taking requests. And I know that that's what the policy says. So you didn't take requests for Pride. You didn't take requests for Juneteenth. You didn't take requests for any of the other ones. Why then are we doing homework, reaching out on the Jewish, the Israeli flag, looking for reasons not to fly this thing? I'm really becoming suspect with what's happening here. Why are we looking for reasons not to fly this flag? Thank you. And again, there can be a request to a counselor or a counselor needs <coughs> to make a proclamation. It could be from a request, it could be on their own. Yes, one more question. Uh, not one more, but yes, next question. Uh, Robert Kaiser, uh, Precinct 6, basically the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes people can look at certain destinations that we want to get to and come to them from different routes. Um, I have the same concerns that um, my, my good friend Todd and my family here have, and, uh, but I come into this from, I fly this from a weird direction. Because I am a liberal, libertarian, conservative, and there aren't as many of us as a left wing, a right wing, and a rudder. <laughs> and what I was thinking was, I remember people can want to do things and interpret the thing that we're doing in different ways. Uh, there are, and social media, of course, is the worst lens to do this. Somebody wants to say Black Lives Matter because they do, and other people. Uh, will say, well, does that mean you don't think some other lives matter? But that's not literally logical. You know, I, Native American lives matter. That doesn't mean you know, all you people from Italy and Germany and Wales, well, maybe Wales, don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that part out. Um, when it comes to something like, I know a lot of people from different backgrounds who were thinking the Israeli flag should be lifted for what happened, but we were thinking about something like 
NATO, or some 10 years back, there was the Charlie Hebdo attack in France, and across the world, uh, nations, but towns and cities and municipi municipalities raised flags, not because they were against some other group, but because they just wanted to show some commonality or recognition with people who were hurt in the Charlie Hebdo attack. And it was millions of people, cities, towns, and municipalities. And there are things like that that happen across the world. And just doing something, uh, not even some specific thing, but something in a meaningful way to show allyship with friends and allies of the United States who were hurt, um, it's not against anybody, but it's to show sometimes that people care. I just spent 18 years living in the Merrimack Valley. Uh, for several years, I was on uh, the board of a synagogue up there, Temple Beth Abraham, and I was on, I was on the security board. And uh, in New Hampshire, in the Merrimack Valley, it was a place where liber liberals, libertarians, and conservatives got along. New Hampshire is an interesting and very cool place. So is Winthrop. I love it here. But what I wanted to say was even there, on the board, we were finding out all across New Hampshire, Massachusetts, there were things going on that the general public doesn't know about. An amazing number of death threats. More than you know of, we were getting information about individuals moving into town uh, with guns ready to kill. There's a lot more going out there, which is why a lot of folks in the, in the well, New England Jewish community were, were frightened and looking for allyship because if you serve in one of these boards or you volunteer in some of these groups, it's a lot, it's not just mean people on social media. There's a lot of terrible stuff out there. So anything folks in the community could do to recognize that kind of thing, uh, it would just go a long way towards making a very small part of the community feel a, a bit more secure. That's all. Thank you. Marcy. Here you go. Marcy Hamilton, please see. I understand everybody and I, everybody's concerns. I understand your concern. And I would like to offer um, information. In January, the one of the schools are having a international night. I think Mr. Gloss, Mr. Gloss said something that they did it in Mel, in Melrose at one meeting I was at. I think it would be great if we all as a community, counselors, town managers, citizens, attend that that presentation at, I believe it's at the coming school, I'm not sure, but I bet you you have it in your notes from the school committee. And you could see the diversity. We could come together as a community, which I've talked about before, and, and we can start building these um, relationships rather than fear and, and um, anxiety. In a world where there's fear and anxiety, we can come together as a community and reach out to our neighbors in simple ways, but at least meaningful ways, and and raise our own personal um, flags, if you will, of friendship. And I think that might be a good idea to look forward to and plan to as a council to have, like uh, I mentioned to my um, town council counselor, about having um, one day next year um, and uh, waive the fee to having block parties. You can get to know your neighbors because we do have. Um, a lot of new neighbors in our town, and kind of build again the communities, our neighborhoods that we had, not so much when I was a little girl, but we can rebuild different communities. And I thank you all for your, the time that you put in, mm -hmm. and if you come to that wonderful international night, maybe we can make it more of not a school kind of thing, but a community night. And they did have a potluck at the park, um, over the summer, but maybe something like that to plan for in the future would help everybody get together and um, utilize our beautiful parks, Mr. Dowd, and um, get to know our neighbors without, you know, any fear or anxiety. That's all I have to say tonight. Thank you, Marcy. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Thank you. Any other public comments? Right. Thank you. We will close public current comment. Correspondence. Um, let me begin with correspondence. We got a letter, and bear with me while I try to read it, from uh, Mr. Domenico. Uh, dear President Letary, thank you and the members of the council 
who made it possible for the Ingleside Park tennis courts to be named in my honor. I was elated to hear the news. Having been raised on Reed Street, number 94, I have found, I have many fond memories of playing there. Um, Uh, while I was working with the Parks Department as a summer employee, conducting the tennis program for several years, I had been coming to, I, and I became an avid tennis player. I look forward to coming to Winthrop, visiting old friends, and thanking them and you in person. Best wishes to you and the council for the success in your future endeavors. Gratefully and happily, John Domenico. Oh, wow. Um, any well other? Yes. That is awesome. yes, it is very nice. Uh, Denise, any correspondence that you have? I have received none, no. Nope. Any other correspondence? Mr. Councilor Munson. I um, would like to, I mean, this is a, a hot topic, so I'll try to be as succinct and concise as possible without. Um, um, going too off the uh, topic, but on 11:18, I received an email from one of my constituents. On 11:19, I got another email asking to uh, consider flying the Israeli flag, uh, and then 11:20, I received another one. So this was not long ago, um, and this is the first meeting since. So we are bringing it to the attention of the town council, and so. The flag policy is was created uh, to basically celebrate a lot of things that make Winthrop Winthrop, and we're still doing that. Is it a perfect policy? No. Is did was it crafted to make it so that it was free speech? No. It was crafted to be government speech to protect the town, and so that we weren't going to get so. I just think that it's important to keep this all in consideration. We are trying to do our best to fulfill this flag policy and m celebrate and support all of our neighbors, residents, and friends. And so we, we are trying to do that. And in honor of these emails and correspondence, I wanted to bring it to the attention of the town council so that we could discuss it. It's legally not permissible for us to have a conversation of a group more than four counselors. So it is not possible to have done anything prior to now legally, just for the, to answer that. So I think that it is important to note that uh, Facebook posts and aggressive uh, texting and Facebooking is not like an, a, a good means of trying to get a proclamation made. It's more about asking and having a conversation with people and, and seeing if we can get it done. For example, one of the town council meetings we had here, we had something in the vicinity of two dozen people imploring us to have the uh, pride flag flown so that they felt included. And so that's when we created a flag policy and we actually did fly the flag and it was, it made many of them feel more included. And that's what we want. We want everyone in this town to feel included and safe. That's what we want is peace. And so for me, I wanted to bring it to the attention of the, crowd, uh, of the council, but I also wanted to just make sure that people understand that I can only speak for myself, but I know these people on this council, their hearts are breaking for all the innocent people that are dying. Are we gonna solve an international crisis with the flag flown? Probably not. But are we gonna make people feel better? Probably. So I think that we should do something. What is the exact solution that makes most people happy? Because let's face it, no solution makes everybody happy. So we're going to try to do our best. Um, and so one of the, if you look at our records so far, we've got four flags. And the bar was set pretty high. What we're doing is either having a national or a state holiday uh, that we're flying a flag in honor of those. 
And then in addition, what we have is a, um, a heritage month and also a local achievement in the Aruzioni, uh, the Olympic flag for the Aruzioni Day. So what we've got is a high bar, um, and we're trying to maintain it. But um, just for the record, it's it's not public comment, so unfortunately we can't have a dialogue. Just correspondence. So yeah, just correspondence. But I just wanted to elucidate. Um, so I just think that um, we need to come up with a solution that makes people feel safe and secure. I didn't. I was not aware that people were feeling insecure until I went to one of the Temple Tifereth events. And I went to the last two that were I was invited to, and the, the first one, I, they were, there was a police detail in front of the building. We had one now all the time. I mean, that's, that didn't, I didn't, that didn't even cross my mind as a need. But apparently there is a real fear yeah, and so I think that there does need to be something done. I don't want it to be a situation where anyone's feeling left out by making someone else feel included. So I, there has also been one other correspondence on 1120 by another gentleman who also suggested uh, a world peace flag to honor all of those that have been, the innocent lives that have been lost, and to basically not just for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but also for the Ukrainian conflict, where thousands and thousands of lives are being lost. I, I don't know if that answers it, but it's not a bad idea. And so what I'm trying to do is have the conversation in a non-hostile and a civil and comfortable manner so that we're not making accusations of anti-Semitism without actually knowing the facts. Any other correspondence by anyone? All right, thank you. Thank you, Council Munt. Committee reports. Any committee reports? Yeah. School department report. There was a school department meeting last night. It was a very brief meeting. Um, very basic stuff, post-Thanksgiving items. Congratulations to the Potter Puff team for a uh, shutout over Revere, and congratulations on the same to the winter football team. Uh, so two tremendous jobs by uh, two Thanksgiving Day big events, and uh, we are very proud of those kids. Uh, there was also discussion on MCAS, MCAS strategy plans and um, questions asked to just get a more streamlined approach, and we there has been a presentation to us. There was a presentation um, at a past meeting from each principal who did a fantastic job presenting their data and such for MCAS results. Um, and now we believe that we'll be getting a more strategic, uh, easy to understand plan as to implementation on MCAS strategy Could sessions. You hear him, please? I'm sorry? I'm just trying to hear you when they're babbling behind. I'm just trying okay. to hear what you're saying, sir. That's all, for, nothing else. And we will now go to the town manager's report. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Council President. Um, quickly, we had um, another meeting with the uh, folks with the Mary Ellen Greenway uh, with regard to, you know, continuing the Greenway over, you know, from the railroad yard across the, the water and over by the, you know, the boat yard and whatnot and connecting that. A uh, good meeting with DCR and others, all the parties involved, trying to make an action plan to, you know, see who wants to take control of the pathway at that area and maybe, you know, is there going to be a bridge, is there not going to be a bridge, and who's going to fund it. So next steps are coming, but we're still uh, making some progress on that, so we're happy with that. Uh, we started union negotiations with the fire union. Uh, they're the only union that are off cycle with everybody else. All the rest end um, June 30th, uh, you know, 2025. These guys end in June 30th, 2024, so their contract will be up this June. So we're starting union negotiations with them now. I had a first meeting. We'll, you know, have another one in a week or so. Um, I was got an invite um, last week and attended a um, meeting out in Beverly at Lynch Park with uh, Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll as they announced their rollout for their new coastal zone management plan. Um, it was a great meeting and well attended. Uh, they were asking uh, NOAA for um, about $75 million and they were also creating a specific position for coastal zone management uh, within the office to actually 
and their position will only be to work with communities to create districts, realizing that towns can't do it on their own. They're trying to create small districts so we can attack this problem wholeheartedly like we would team up with, you know, Revere and Chelsea and surrounding communities and try to work on all of our coastal resilience issues as a team and also work together with the financing. So uh, excited to be invited to that and, you know, happy to, um, I mean, as we know, we were part of the MVP 2.0 rollout, um, you know, we had last spring. Um, and then we, you know, this is the next phase in that. So the governor's staying true to a word and, you know, certainly taking climate resiliency and important, you know, the, the importance of it and uh, working hard to, you know, put the resources to, you know, back it up and create some uh, new grant opportunities for us and surrounding communities. So we're excited about that. Um, as I spoke at last meeting, we're also working with Zen City to get some pricing, uh, to utilize their software to try to create some, uh, give an update on projects that are going on in town, but also to do some surveys uh, with some upcoming stuff we have, not only with the fire station, but, you know, the middle school site, et cetera. Um, they've got a nice AI tech option that goes along with that. They gave a demonstration. I got to see it. You know, you put in some parameters, and they create some really logical questions, so it was kind of, you haven't seen that in action before, so that was pretty neat. Uh, so we're looking to get some pricing from them and see if we can move forward. Um, I also wanted a special thanks to the DPW Director Caller and his team, you know, overseeing the Revere Street project. You know, true to their word, it was done before Thanksgiving. Um, and all the projects that went all in all the summer. I mean, we all had detours and traffic issues and uh, inconveniences, and certainly um, everybody was patient, so we thank them for that. But, you know, um, projects are wrapping up now for the winter time, so we're happy with that. So I just wanted to give a shout out to them. And I'll pass it back to you, Mr. Council President, if you want to uh, give out the free cash certification numbers. Yeah, thank you. There, there has been some. Good news that we just got certified our free cash, and free cash was certified at 2.138 million, um, which again is is a great service to our department heads, our town manager, Everybody. Um, yep. the council for their work and budget budget work. Um, but again, it's not you, you know you don't want to have or I don't want to have five million dollars in free cash. That just means you're being crazy conservative in your budgeting and, and too much over so and uh, so I think this is this is a good place to be and uh, all the enterprise funds also came back in the black which was great so uh, that was really good news also I had asked the town manager to get some more information on trash and recycling and how we've been doing and um, it's amazing. I'm looking at all the data from 2019 and some of the categories are, are missing because we weren't paying for tonnage back in 2019 and part of 2020. But uh, in 2021, you have some COVID year there too, but we have, you know, our tonnage on our mainstream trash has gone down 11% basically a year and our recycling has gone up, um, you know, not quite as much, but four to 5%. Um, cost of mainstream trash has stayed relatively stable, but up about 15% since 2020. Um, cost of recycling to dispose of the recycling has gone up 400%. Um, you know, so just to give an idea, back in 2021, September, $85 a ton for us to dispose of our trash and $23 a ton to dispose of recyclables. Uh, this Past September, a couple months ago, it was $97 a ton for trash, up $12, $99 a ton for recycling. Um, but, you know, the fact of the matter is bringing more attention to trash has definitely lowered our uh, usage, I guess, which is, which is a good thing. Um, and we continue to, you know, I continue to monitor this closely. I think it's still a hot topic and it's a hot topic for me and um, as we go into the budget season want to take a look at it again but um, you know it's good to see that people are definitely more cognizant of, of the trash being tossed um, and again I, I just want a, a shout out to the town manager for um, you know w we went through the budget with a fine tooth comb last year and we were not trying to like just create a budget that's going to generate free cash we just through good management through the department heads and through the leadership of the town manager, we were able to come back with certified free cash for a little over $2 million. Um, any questions for the town manager? I, I go on. Councilor DeMarco. Hi, uh, um, council, uh, town manager, I um, have an issue that I need to bring up to you that I think is very important and it's kind of urgent now. Um, first off, 
I think a lot of the people on Revere Street were relieved. I know I was. Um, I can't tell you enough. Karen, you sorry. Um, I was very relieved to see the road work done. Um, and I know they have to finish it up in the spring. Um, and they're doing the manhole covers now, so I know that's something we're going to have to deal with this week. But I think something that we didn't see coming and that I definitely didn't see coming is they put – those temporary lines down on the road. Mm -hmm. um, so I was driving into Winthrop the other night and I almost got into a head-to-head -head car accident. Unfortunately, those lines that were put down have had the unintended effect of making people think now that they can pass because it's oh. not double lined. Oh. And there have been multiple, uh, multiple neighbors have come to me and said, People are passing, and that road is dangerous enough as it is getting out of town in the morning. And, you know, say what you want. It was awful when we had all the construction going on, but everybody was going five miles per hour. There were no accidents. You know what I mean? So yep. the last thing we want is people now trying to go around yep. people. So maybe, I don't know if it's cones. I don't know if it's signs that say no passing for the winter, but I wanted to bring that to yeah, you. Yeah, I'll work with Director Cal. We'll get work to get that fixed. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. And just again for clarification, Councilor DeMarco mentioned about next year coming back. That the only reason they'll be coming back in the spring is just to put a top coat yeah, of two inches. Coat. Yeah. No digging, no yeah. craziness. Um, anyone else? Uh, Councilor Munson. Will you give us an update on the RFI process and where you're at? Um, fine, put the fine tune process on it now. It's not quite done, as I promise. Once I get it done, I'll send it out to the council members. Great. Yep. All right. Um, Council Aiello, did you have anything? Sorry. No. All right. Um, tell me, uh, uh, CDI. I'm sorry. I'm uh, just confirming. No questions from me. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. CDICR. Uh, they have not met yet. I think they're meeting December 13th. 13th. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to Old Business Memorials Committee. Town Council accept the following memorials as voted by the Memorials Committee with a positive recommendation <coughs> on all. Dedicate a chair in the name of Robert Bob Gillis in the E.B. Newton Historian Room in remembrance of his expertise on the history of the town of Winthrop and his willingness to share with all. Um, I had asked that that went to the Memorials Committee several months back and we thank them for their action on this. Um, Bobby just passed way too soon and um, gave a lot of his time and effort to this town, and I thank the Memorials Committee for their action. Um, is there a motion? A motion. Be, a motion by Councilor DeMarco, seconded by Councilor Belcher. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor to accept the Memorials recommendation say aye. 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 Those no, the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Councilor Hello. Appointments. Um, and citations. I have one citation that I want to give out. Um, town of Winthrop Town Council citation. Be it known to all that the Winthrop Town Council hereby offers its gratitude to Peter Solomon in recognition of 25 years of service to the Winthrop Public Library. On behalf of the residents of the town of Winthrop, especially the frequent library visitors that you have dedicated your professionalism to and helping any way possible, we truly thank you. We extend our most sincere gratitude for your positive contribution to the many lives that you have touched and offer our best wishes on your retirement given this 28th day, of November 2023 at Winthrop Mass. Um, thank you, Peter, for your years of service. They are greatly appreciated. We will make sure this gets to you in time. And there will be a, there'll be an event at the library this Thursday from 4 to 6 in his honor, so if anybody wants to show up and you know pay their respects. and. This Thursday, 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 yes. Oh. From what time? 4 to 6 p.m. 4 to 6 Thanks. Thursday. You're welcome. And I do have two appointments uh, submitted by Jim Letary, Con Town Council President. Motion that the Town Council accept the appointment made by Town Council President Letary to appoint Stephen Gatinji and Aaron Williams to the uh, Commission for Diversity, Inclusion, and Community Relations Committee or take any other action relative thereto. Uh, Motion by Councillor Belcher, second by Councillor yeah. DeMarco. Yeah. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Uh, Councillor Munson. I know Aaron. I'm, I'm fully supportive. Who was the first person you suggested? Stephen Katinji. Um, Steve, uh, Stephen Katinji. Yep. 
Did I miss the um, his? Yeah, it was in the was, uh, I missed it then. I'm sorry. Yeah. Stephen has an MBA from Suffolk. He works at State Street Bank. Bay, uh, Thank bank you. loan operations manager is understands the commitment. He's interested in the position. He believes he could bring a different perspective and viewpoint to the committee. And his vision for the town is one more as a more inclusive town in all areas and aspects of the town's lives and activities. Um, I think Stephen will be. Um, will be a very good candidate. Awesome, thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 No, opposed, no. The ayes have it, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I also um, suggest that we make a motion to amend council rules for the December 19th meeting and change the start time from 7 p.m. to 6. I believe the council will be having an event after that meeting potentially, so I thought it would be better to start the meeting a little earlier. So did somebody like to motion. make a motion to amend council rules to start the, um, the December 19th meeting at 6 p.m.? Motion was made by Councilor DeMarco, seconded by Councilor Belcher. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The meeting on the 19th will be at 6 p.m. Public comment. Yes, Karen. Um, Karen Travis, precinct two. Since nobody else has mentioned it, and I don't know if the town manager plans on doing it at the end of the night, I think the DPW did a great job with that tree. Yes, they down did. At, uh, Square. Yeah. At the end of the night. Yeah. Um, I know that Larissa Wojak was doing the stars. She was doing the lettering for the stars. My daughter did um, buy a star for my husband, and um, we went down. She went down the other night, and she found it, and she was very, very excited to see it. But I watched the sizzle lift go up with Mike Upton. I don't know who the other gentleman was up there. Yeah. And uh, they, they did a great job with it. They, they really did. Yeah. They did a fantastic yeah. job. Mm -hmm. it, it looks really good, those stars. We purchased a couple right. also. Right. And those are available at the Winthrop Chamber. The stars are $25. Um, it's a memory star. It's a $15 next year if you wanted to re-up it. Yeah. Um, it could be written on by yourself, or it could be written on by an employee. And they're hung. There are still availability there. Proceeds. Um, some of the proceeds from that go to Mia Mori, which helps the food bank and such. And uh, it's a really good program. It's the first year trying to get it started. And uh, thank you, Karen. And thank the DPW for all their efforts. Yeah. Uh, Carol. I have a process question. Um, Carol, I'm with Precinct 1. Um, so, John, you mentioned that. Um, He's going to start getting emails on the 20th, right? 19th. The, or, or whatever date. Yeah. Three days ago, four days and ago. And again, just, just you, this is just public comment, no back and forth. It's okay. just a comment. So my, yeah, Thank my you. question, or I guess my comment is, is the only way to start something, if, if, if I brought something forward to my counselor, to then it has to wait till the next meeting? Or is it, is it can any traction be done in between meetings? The deadline to, for a counselor to uh, ask for something to be put on the agenda is Thursday morning. Thursday morning before the meeting. Okay. Ultimately, the council president makes a decision on what goes and so what, what goes does and, and what does not go out. Okay. Yes. Well, for, <coughs> yes. yes. Question, well, for, it has to go up. It, for the owner's agenda, are you supposed to put 48 hours in yeah. The agenda goes out but we have an agenda meeting on the Thursday before the next meeting. Thursday. Well, thank yes. You. Yes. Okay, is it okay to make just a public comment? Oh. Public comment, absolutely. Okay. No, I just, before, I just yep. wanted to ask before I come up. As long as it's positive. Okay, precinct six, <laughs> yeah. Priest Row, Brian. I'm, my parents' bench was the first one, Podium Crest Ave Park, the bottom of Highland, and my hat's off to your DPW crew. The amazing job that they're doing, maintaining that park. It's so great walking through the Highlands in, there was always just Tom sitting on the middle bench, that Jerry Falbo's bench, yep. um, that's beside my parents, that his dad put, uh, Attorney Falbo put in after I put my parents in. But it's such a pleasure walking down there and seeing all the a whole, not just Tom sitting in the park, but the whole neighborhood getting together, sitting on all the benches. The parks, they're all decorating their benches now. And my hat's off to the DPW, the summer, the, fa the fall coming in with the grass getting cut in the way they're maintaining the park. It was amazing. And 
going back a year, the lights and whoever it was that got you guys on the board or whoever that got the contract together, that whoever did the lighting, it was the park looked amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dodd. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I just want to reiterate concerning the uh, Ingleside Park. Because sometimes people watch the beginning of the meeting, the end of the meeting. Uh, I tend to, uh, when I get a few minutes, to, to watch sections at a time. I want the town manager to understand that if he puts a uh, request for interest, it includes the fact that Ingleside Park takes up 11 acres of that property down there. The other property at the top of the hill, like I said, is uh, owned by the town, 1.19 acres. And so, I, in my opinion, and hearing from other people in the town, the reason that it hasn't been sold yet is because everybody knows it's a park. That's why all this trouble is occurred. So if you want to have a change of use, you know just how to do it. And you know just how to do it because you mentioned it in your letter. So it's going to go all there. As far as uh, Mr. Munson's uh, circular or something, uh, when the first bomb was dropped, and it, it just for clarification, Jack, there's no personal, uh, uh, you know, mentioning of any personal names. There's just comments to the council. Well, well it was confusing. Let's That's okay. That I understand. And uh, I went right down to my friend Bobby Lou, and Leonardo was there, my two Jewish friends from high school. And I offered him my help if anything ever happened to him, his family, or his property, to call me immediately. I didn't wait for another day to go by before I, you know, I was concerned about it. So to say that you know I didn't really realize what was happening at the time, I mean I think most people realized instantly that it was a big problem. Um, I can't understand, uh, and I guess if Mr. DeMarco wants to uh, put, put it on the agenda, you're, you're going to. Yes. Concerning if they want to put a, a flag for what is it a policy of two weeks or something? Two weeks. It's pretty simple for me. I, it didn't take me two two weeks to realize who my friends were. That day, so so I hope that you get right after this, and, and let's do the proper thing. Thank you. Yes, Todd Sacco, Precinct Two. I would also like to take an opportunity to correct the record. On November twentieth, I did send an email to Mr. Munson regarding this issue. Eighteenth. Uh, the agenda. Okay, well, even better. The agenda. The information. To get it on the agenda would have taken five minutes to send the request to you to have a discussion, a friendly, calm discussion. This Thursday, this past Thursday, you had from the, from at least the 18th to the this Thursday that just passed, which is what the 27th, 20, 20 whatever it 20th. was, 20th. No, Monday was the 20th. No, the 23rd. The 23rd. You had from the 18th to the 23rd to get it on the agenda. This isn't a personal attack. This is a statement of fact. That was a misrepresentation of the facts because you have plenty of time to get it on the agenda. And you can just copy and paste the proclamation and just change the language in there. It takes two seconds. So let's call a spade a spade here. Please speak truthfully next time. Thank you. Any other public comments? Um, all right, public relations, uh, again, thank you to the DPW for their work, and thank you to the chamber for their work also. The event, the tree, uh, tree lighting ceremony was uh, very well attended. Um, the lights looked great down there, and uh, I want to thank the chamber and especially DPW for a lot of the setup as well as A1 lighting. Um, there are board members needed for Board of License, CDICR, I believe is full now. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, swearing in ceremony for all elected officials will be January 2nd at 6 o'clock. There will be a town council meeting following that, probably at 7.30. Um, this event, location to be determined, but I believe it will be at the Winthrop High School. And um, look at the town website for more information. Any other? Councilor Honan? No. Councilor Fusillo? No. Councilor Munson? No, thanks. Councilor Belcher? No. Councilor DeMarco? Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
you know, um, first off, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the flag. And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how I felt, you know, coming from the background that I do. I mean, Jack, Kathleen, Barbara all knew my Bubby. So, um, you know, you can imagine how upsetting the last couple months have been for myself. Um, first off, I want to talk about um, something that I don't normally talk about, and that's world politics, which it does play into this. It's, but very quickly, I do want to say that a lot of people are talking about Israel, a lot of people are talking about Palestine. I want everybody to realize, okay, while the horrific events that happened in Israel and their right to defend themselves, we also need to acknowledge that there are innocent people in Palestine, innocent Palestinians that are getting hurt, women, children, you know. So as long, as much as anti-Semitism is unacceptable in this town, Islamophobia is also unacceptable in this town, mm -hmm. okay? So I wanted to say that. Now, as, as far as the flag policy is concerned, the tough thing about the flag policy is, is there really a flag in the world that doesn't offend at least one person? I mean, you know, if you put up the Israeli flag, you might offend a Palestinian. If you put up the Israeli flag, you might upset a palace, uh, uh, reverse. The, palace reverse flag. it. You know what I mean. Um, if you put up the pri if you don't put up the pride flag, you offend uh, the LBGT community. If you do put it up, you might offend some staunch Christian conservatives who that's against what they. There's not. I mean, even the U.S. flag. You know, some people are offended by the United States flag. So there is no flag that is not going to be considered offensive by somebody. So the question is, with this flag policy, where is that line? Is it 5% of the people are offended? Is it 10%? That's going to come on us. And that's, that's the policy. That's what we have to deal with. So we're going to have to take these all on a case-by-case -case basis and just try to use our heart and try to do the right thing, OK? Um, I am going to make the proclamation, and people here will tell you, I've been talking about it. I didn't make the proclamation, but I've been talking about it and speaking with other counselors about it for weeks, okay? But, um, you know, it is, I, I, I think the policy's not imperfect. It's far from imperfect, but that's what we're playing with. I think you meant it's far from perfect. Right? Yeah. I, I, I made a lot of misquotes there, but everybody, I think, knew what I was saying. Thank you. Councilor DeMarco, Council Flockhart, yeah. Vice President Majuro. Uh, three quick things. Um, there are two, two of the three um, holiday uh, fundraisers um, that CASA is organizing um, that if you have the means to and you feel um, as if you'd like to contribute, I just wanted to kind of give it a little bit of publicity. The first one is a gift card drive that they're running a lot of the times during the holiday season. Um, there's like a Toys for Tots or uh, something for the younger generation. Um, you know, this is targeted more towards middle school and high school kids in Winthrop who might not, um, you know, receive a, a present this holiday season. So um, if you want to contribute to that, you can email jreth at winthropcasa.org. That's jenreth, jreth at winthropcasa.org. The second one is a uh, winter coat and mitten and hat drive that's co-hosted by uh, CASA and the Winthrop Equitable Family Engagement Network. Um, again, if you have coats, mittens um, that you would like to donate, anything new, um, um, you can email the same email, jreth at winthropcasa.org. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to wish my mom a happy birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Council Aiello? Thank you. And we hope you're feeling better, Council Aiello. Our best wishes. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion made by <laughs> Council Fusilla, second by Council <laughs> Belcher. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 A